lo contrario, entonces pues continuamos con, con nuestro orden del día, en donde pues quiero presentarles al ingeniero Carlos Nalda, quien nos hablará sobre el componente satelital del Internet de las Cosas. Carlos asesora a clientes en una amplia gama de aspectos sobre la política interna e internacional, asuntos regulatorios y transaccionales en el sector de las telecomunicaciones con un enfoque particular en comunicaciones satelitales e inalámbricas. Carlos trabajó para la Comisión Federal de Comunicaciones y las autoridades reguladoras extranjeras alrededor del mundo. Ha representado a clientes en procedimientos de revisión, de atribución de espectro, reglamentación y concesión de licencias. Habla con frecuencia sobre asuntos satelitales y de espectro y se ha desempeñado en numerosas conferencias internacionales de telecomunicaciones como la WIT, CITEL, entre otras. Démosle la bienvenida al ingeniero Nalda. Thank you very much, and uh, I want to start by thanking the, uh, the ministry and uh, A&E for hosting uh, this important Congress. Uh, with respect to uh, the issue of the Internet of Things, uh, it's wonderful to have a chance to speak about the satellite-related issues uh, associated uh, with this important topic. It's often uh, forgotten or overlooked. Uh, the satellite component of the Internet of Things with all of the excitement uh, with respect to mobile uh, broadband and terrestrial broadband, uh, particularly uh, this week uh, in the United States we, where they are auctioning off uh, wireless spectrum and the uh, total of the auction bids is currently at 37 billion U.S. dollars uh, for 60, 65 megahertz or so of spectrum. But It is not possible to forget the satellite component of the Internet of Things uh, during this Congress because our thoughtful hosts have put the satellite center stage. Uh, so we can certainly focus on that uh, for the next few minutes. When speaking about the Internet of Things, of course, uh, we're talking about uh, a substantial number of connected devices. Uh, the Internet was an Internet of people, and it is becoming an Internet of things, an Internet of connected devices, where the devices will substantially outnumber uh, the number of users, going from hundreds of millions to tens of billions in the next few years. Uh, as low as 8 to 10 billion, as high as 50 billion are the es estimates. And all of these devices will be talking to each other and connecting and communicating with their users, but not all of them will communicate in the same way, with the same bandwidth needs, with the same spectrum needs in terms of proximities to access points to the network, etc. So as we think about the Internet of Things and the satellite component in the Internet of Things, we have to remember that one size does not fit all. Looking at the landscape of the Internet of Things, there are many, many ways to view uh, the various vertical markets. Uh, this is one example uh, from the investment firm and research firm of Goldman Sachs that looked at the verticals, starting with the individual user in terms of wearables and going out to connected cars, to the connected home, to connected cities, and then to the industrial Internet and major uh, industry segments like transportation and energy. And there are significant enablers to the expansion of the Internet of Things, including uh, very inexpensive sensors, bandwidth, uh, processing, computer chips within the devices, and of course, ubiquitous coverage of wireless connectivity, which includes both terrestrial-based and satellite-based coverage, and the need for backhaul connectivity or a link to the broader public internet. The need for wireless coverage everywhere is without question. However, the type of coverage that may be appropriate or necessary for a particular application 
may vary dramatically depending on the location of the device and depending on the application that is uh, being served. So you do have circumstances of, of course, indoor use with, in very close, close proximity to access points. Uh, the urban uh, construct going farther out in the less densely populated areas to rural applications and then of course very remote locations that don't traditionally have terrestrial wireless connectivity uh, to speak of. But also when you're looking at those geographic uh, use cases you also have sort of this service or application use case. Are you looking at two-way broadband? Someone who's using their mobile device to stream video content? Are you looking at remote monitoring, uh, which is often asymmetrical and one way, but relatively low bandwidth in terms of its requirements? Video surveillance and various industrial applications that may run the gamut of various intensities of spectrum use and specific applications. As I mentioned, and many of the commenters, uh, presenters today have alluded, there is no one size fits all and you must ensure that there is a viable alternative to communicate with the global internet. As Goldman Sachs put it, expanding the telecom, cable, and satellite pipelines that carry traffic through the broader wireless networks is a critical part of the thinking and the development of the Internet of Things. So looking at satellite applications generally, this is this image is just a, an example of the various types of applications that should be considered in the context of existing satellite offerings and the foundation for new service offerings via satellite. You'll see on the right hand side the more urban setting and excuse me the left hand side <laughs> and progressing towards the right uh, to the rural and remote applications where from content and media delivery and distribution, where substantial uh, reliance on uh, the satellite industry exists today, to commercial internet and broadband access, to backhaul of broadband wireless services in remote areas, and indeed very specialized uh, satellite-based access services such as broadband internet on board ships and aircrafts today. These various offerings continue to evolve as technology improves, as innovation uh, uh, continues to progress uh, within the industries generally and the satellite industry in particular. When many, many think of the Internet of Things and satellite services, they think first perhaps in terms of the machine-to-machine -machine market. And that is a key segment within the satellite Internet of Things marketplace. Uh, we do expect substantial growth in that market segment in terms of revenues and in terms of the number of connected devices. So as you'll see from this slide, revenues are expected to increase uh, at least double and the number of connected devices uh, to effectively uh, triple during the time frame. But there's quite a bit more to the satellite component of the Internet of Things than simple M to M applications. There are other end user applications uh, that are provided as well. As I noted, briefly before, transportation, connected cars, buses, trains, and aircraft. Individuals continue to demand to be connected even while in transit, and particularly in areas such as the maritime and the aviation sector, uh, satellite is the only option for international or over water uh, transport. Connected homes, schools, and shared broadband facilities in more remote locations that are not connected by fiber rely on satellite links to provide 
the broadband services uh, to enable those local communities uh, to flourish, to thrive. And then even to the individual, where new developments in mobile satellite technology and innovation in electronic components allow for direct service to individual users, whether it's a satellite sleeve for a, an iPhone, uh, or even a new GPS and satellite-based transmitter uh, for those individuals who may be in remote locations but need to remain in communications via text. And those are just what's happening today. Now, the satellite industry, of course, continues to innovate on its own, and you may have been reading about some of this. There are new satellite designs that put substantially more capacity on individual satellites and the introduction of uh, larger non-geostationary satellite constellations, multiple satellites serving the same geographic region, are beginning to uh, be implemented. Currently, uh, the KA band O3B network provides more enterprise-based connectivity, more backhaul connectivity, but even to uh, as broadband service providers in remote locations around the world, that satellite link is what connects the local communities to the broader internet. You've also perhaps heard about additional interest in new NGSO satellite constellation by the likes of Google and Facebook and most recently Elon Musk and SpaceX who are considering the deployment of hundreds of NGSO satellites operating at KU band and other frequencies to provide the vision of an internet in the sky uh, that perhaps was, it was before its time uh, 20 or so years ago with the teledesic proposal, uh, but now is coming into fruition. The reason, in part because of advances in microprocessing and antenna technologies. Uh, gone are the days of only big dishes and multiple dishes to communicate with non-geostationary satellite constellations. Instead, flat panel phased array antennas, antennas based on new metamaterials that are extremely lightweight and inexpensive to manufacture, and other new antenna technologies are making the terminal piece more affordable and more uh, realistic in terms of a low cost ability to communicate with multiple satellites in the sky. I'd have to admit, however, that because the infrastructure used by the satellite industry is made for long-term de deployment, 10, 15, 20 years in orbit, the pace of change can be somewhat slower than it is here on the ground. Although we've made tremendous progress in satellite terminal technology, the spacecraft in the sky, once there, they're there. Uh, the changes that are currently being implemented um, in terms of steerable beams and beam forming uh, from the ground allow for some measure of evolution once a satellite is in orbit, orbit, but by and large, the capacity is there, and we work with that capacity as best we can. And of course, many new systems in many new bands are coming online with the Inmarsat Global Express system and others at KA band, and even dozens of new satellites in the C band and KU band are scheduled for launch in the next few years. Just to mention briefly, in addition to that end user service, whether directly via satellite or with an important satellite link, the backhaul component is also a critical factor. I mentioned the notion of wireless broadband, terrestrial broadband, and today, particularly in remote areas where it is difficult to lay fiber, VSAT Earth stations are actually carrying the voice communication and the data communication 
to and from those remote base stations, and they're doing so quite successfully. They're doing it at C-band in areas of, of high rain, uh, as well as in KU-band and KA-band. I have to say a few words uh, in this context about the satellite component of the Internet of Things and continued spectrum availability. We've talked about a wide range of service applications in this presentation and in others. And spectrum must remain available for both terrestrial and satellite use in that context. On the terrestrial side, both licensed and unlicensed spectrum approaches are uh, available and, can and continue to be implemented as appropriate. Advances in technology in the satellite industry, be they antenna uh, technology, uh, signal processing, modulation schemes, and others, will also enhance spectrum efficiency. So as we take a look at the spectrum uses and the spectrum demands of the Internet of Things going forward, we do need to look realistically at what those projections are, how they've been developed, and of course, how the spectrum is being used today. There are many public policy objectives that must be met, weighed and balanced in terms of technological development, the availability of broadband wireless access in urban and increasingly in more rural areas, but also the ability to serve a nation and a region ubiquitously to ensure that connectivity and communications can be provided uh, in the context of disaster relief, uh, emergency preparedness, uh, and other important government functions. So in that context, as we consider the notion of the Internet of Things, as we consider the use of spectrum and the allocation of spectrum going forward, uh, we need to weigh and balance uh, some of those issues. So in summary, uh, just to highlight a few of the points that we've touched upon, satellites do play a very important and a growing role in the Internet of Things. New technologies will accelerate and further expand the role of satellites in uh, this new area. Importantly, NGSO satellite const constellations, satellites that are flying at substantially lower altitudes that allow for far lower latency, and because there are multiple satellites in the constellation, far higher throughputs. Improvements in terminal technology, making them smaller, uh, and in some measure, because of those lower altitude NGSO satellites, less power will be required. Uh, so they can be uh, more flexible and more efficient, not just for larger enterprise type uses, but even down to the individual user level. And new service applications and architectures uh, may come online, things that we have yet to even contemplate uh, that will be served by uh, the satellite industry in conjunction with other communications industry players. We just have to be careful as an industry, uh, as regulators, as uh, international decision makers, not to foreclose the opportunities and the possibilities for future innovation, for future advancement, in the satellite industry and other industries, of course. Core communications functionalities provided by satellites certainly need to be protected. And in our industry's view, can certainly be protected consistent with the expansion of spectrum availability, new service applications, and innovation in wireless services for the Internet of Things. Thank you.